Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. What a blessing it is to be at evening prayer. Thank you, Jesus. What a blessing it is to be at evening prayer. It is now 3 o'clock. Bless the Lord. I'm excited, still excited from today. Still excited. Hi, Esther. Special prayer for you today. Thank you, Father. Hi, Mahalia. How y'all doing? I'm so overwhelmed by everything <laughs> that God is doing. Amen. Just overwhelmed. Amen. By his anointing, by the fire, the heat of his anointing, and everything that I've been feeling in my spirit. And, and God is coming through. Hi, Richard. How you doing today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I know is I feel in my spirit. Mm. It's some awesome things taking place. Some yokes are being broken and destroyed. And every obstacle that's been getting in your way, that's been trying to block, to hinder, God is moving it out of the way. In fact, he's blasting it out of the way. And this is a season he's going to catapult you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm excited today. Um, I'm going to give you maybe another minute or two. And I, I like to just jump right into what needs to happen. Um, the goodness of the Lord uh, goes beyond saying. It's so many things that God has been preparing us for. So many things he's been doing. And this pandemic has drawn us closer to him has brought us together in a special way. And and I, on my way from the church as I was coming back home, I was just thinking about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I was just thinking about the things that God has promised through the years. And, and it looked like it wasn't coming to pass. It just looked like this is it. Is this all it is? It's got to be more to it. And when God spoke and God said, yes, it is more. <sighs> I said, Father, I thank you. We haven't even touched the surface of what God wants for us. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. I'm going to go on and get right into it, amen. Um, because if I, when I get going, it's, it's, I like to drive right on into it. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised it, Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. If the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raiseth up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwell in you. We talked about it a little bit today. And then Romans chapter 4 and verse 19 through 21 says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred, talking about Abraham, a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. God promised him he was going to have a son. God made a promise to Abraham. It looked like it wasn't going to happen. Sarah stepped in and did her little maneuvering and finagling to make something happen by giving her him her handmaid. And then when the child was born, she was jealous of the child. 
And there are times that we get involved and we rush things and we move things and we go ahead of God. And so what we got is a counterfeit. We don't have the real thing. And what God is saying today is, I don't want to give you a counterfeit. I promised Abraham, and even though he was waiting, he followed his wife and accepted the handmaiden. Now let me take you further. St. John chapter 20, chapter 5, St. John 5 and 25. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when dead. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live, shall live the voice. When they hear the voice of the Son of God, they that hear shall live. So I want to give you some prayer points again. A little bit different but similar to today. God said to me that the voice of resurrection shall arise. And when the voice of resurrection arise and speak, it'll speak to every dead area in your life. And I command it, I speak it so now in the name of Jesus over you. Some of you still basking in the anointing from our 12 o'clock segment. And I, I pray that you kept on with your hand on your head and the other on your belly button and beginning to pray and, 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 and calling down the Holy Ghost fire to fall upon you, to burn up every dead thing, everything that, that God don't want to resurrect again, he's going to burn it up. But everything that need to be resurrected, he will let it live. He would speak life and cause it to live again. And remember Ezekiel and the dry bones in Ezekiel chapter 20, uh, 37 talks about the dry bones in the valley and, and, and God asked Ezekiel son of God can these bones live? Ezekiel said Lord you know you're God you know these bones can live if you speak it God is saying to you there are some dead things in your life that died but I didn't intend for it to die the enemy came and killed some things. So I want to resurrect those things that the enemy had killed, had, 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 had stopped, had, had just stepped in the way and blocked you from some things. So every dead end confronting your destiny today, we got to scatter it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be on very long today. I just want to get directly to my prayer point. And I want you to, to be on board with me. And I want you to, to, to you could repeat after me, but uh, if you would, ask God, what is it in my life that need to be resurrected? What is it around me? What is it that I've let go of that you gave me and I didn't follow through? What is it that I have to go back and pick up again and see to, through to the end? What have I done? I walked away from something I wasn't supposed to. Glory to God. But I want to speak life into you today again and I want to empower you this evening prayer hour and I want to speak now that the voice of resurrection would arise in you and every dead area in your life I command it to be resurrected now in the blood of Jesus by the blood of Jesus I soak you in the blood. I pray the blood over you, that the blood would cover you, that the, that the blood would protect you, that the blood would shield you. Every dead end confounding your destiny that would come and get in the way to block you. I Scatter it into pieces right now. In the name of Jesus, every power assigned to paralyze you, to paralyze the glory that God has given you, to disregard, I disregard it by fire. Every situation that came to paralyze it, and I have to say it again because that's why you stop. You, you couldn't go any further, but that was a situation from the enemy that came to paralyze your destiny, to keep you from going forth in the name of the Lord. So the power, I speak that the power of resurrection fall upon every good but dead issue 
in your life right now in the name of Jesus. Every good issue, but for some reason it died. I speak the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit to go into that situation, to wake it up, alert it, let it live, allow it to live. Hallelujah. And God keeps saying to me the word impotent. The power of impotence has come over your life to kill your destiny. So I speak to the spirit of impotence now and I command the spirit of intimate, uh, of, of impotence to die now. In the name of Jesus, I speak that it would die. That spirit will not brew in you. It will not grow in you. It will, it will not remain in you. I come against it with the blood of Jesus. When I know that I'm hitting an area that really need to be dealt with, the enemy tried to, to, to tie my tongue or, or make me get a little trip out, but I bind it up in the name of Jesus. The word would get out. The spirit of impotence. Hallelujah, that's over your life. I command that spirit to drop now to the ground and die. It will not flourish in you. It will not live in you. It will not take up residence in your body. I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that spirit now off of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I thank you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, this point right here, I want to say, it, it really deals a little bit with some women. Hallelujah. Uh, with you've been having problems in conception, but trust it, I trust in God for the fruit of your womb. Every dead, dead reproductive organ in your body hear the voice of resurrection now come alive I want you to put your hand on your belly if you've been trying to conceive and for whatever reason you hadn't been able to conceive I ask you now put your hand on your belly and begin to speak your reproductive organ I command it to come alive I command it to be resurrected now and function the way God intended for it to function I speak to the male organ, every part of you that seemingly couldn't produce, couldn't produce seed, every part of you that the enemy has come to try to make you null and void, I bind it up now, I rebuke that spirit off of you, I cast it to the pit of hell now, I send it I send it to the pit. It will not be uh, uh, in operating in your life. I command your spirit, your organs, your organs, male organs, feet to come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over you. Hallelujah. I speak to every dead organ, everything that refused to produce, everything that seemingly is dead. I speak life now. I speak life. I speak health. I speak healing. I command your body to come in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Begin to tell God thank you. Begin to give him glory. Hallelujah. His resurrection power is still at work. His resurrection power. Remember I told you earlier, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is operating within you. And everything around you that seemingly was dead, God said you have the power and you have the authority to speak life in into every dead situation right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of God all over me at this point. See, the man plants the seed. We are the nurturers. We carry the seed and we nurture it and carry it for the nine months and then it is ready now. It has developed in our womb and, and now it's to come forth healthy. And if the enemy could stop the man from planting the seed, then eventually he'll step out the, the, the human 
human life, human beings as we know it. But God said, whatever seemingly was dead, Abraham thought that he was dead there. He didn't think he could produce. He said, my God, you made a promise to me. And now I'm an old man. How in the world? And, and my wife is an old woman. How in the world is she going to go and conceive a baby, carry it nine months, birth the baby at her age? Lord, help me. That's the mystery of the kingdom. In God, everything is possible. What man tell you is not possible, God step in and tell you it is impossible. By the power invested in me by the Holy Ghost, I speak to your body. I speak to every part of you that refused to produce. I speak life now. I speak health. I speak healing. And I speak that this time that you will have a healthy baby. This time you have a healthy, uh, 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 a healthy pregnancy. This time, hallelujah, God, I praise your name. Come alive. I speak to your organs. I command it to come in line with the word of God. I command your organs to line up with the word. Now, I speak the fire of God, the power of God, the hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, the authority of God to operate on the inside of you. <sighs> Glory. Every dead but profitable relationship. Thank you, Lord. There's some relationships that it died, but it was profitable for you. It was profitable because it was designed that it would move your life forward. And the enemy came and cut it off. Cut it off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But by the resurrected power and fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, I speak resurrection now that God would resurrect that relationship. It was designed to catapult you into the next level, into the next dimension in God. The enemy is mad. He don't want you to excel. He put people around you with jealous bones. Don't want to see you make it if they can't make it. But there were some healthy relationships that God had put in your life to move you forward. And the enemy came in and got involved. And after moving and finagling, that relationship was dead. God said, I designed people. I put people in place. I use people. Their hand is my hand in the earth to help move you from point A to point B. I put people in your life. There are times the enemy come and retrieve what God has for you. And rather than fight and recognize that God put that there, you retreat. But God said, this season, I'm going to bring it back full circle. And you're going to recognize and you're going to know that, yes, this was the, a relationship that was God ordained. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Every arrow fired to weaken your faith in the promises of God for your life. What are you waiting for? I command it to die now. Every arrow that the enemy has shot towards you to weaken your faith in the promise. I command the arrow to fall to the ground and die. In the name of Jesus, I command that arrow to fall. Now every fiery dot that was pointed at you, that was pointed in your direction, every word curse, every stone that was thrown, I command it to go now, Satan the Lord rebuke you, get your hands off of the people of God, get your hands off of their life, get your hands out of their business, hallelujah glory to God, glory to God glory to God, glory to God this is a season that you will excel. This is a season that you will move forward. This is a season that you will go forth. This is a season I speak the ability, the power, and the authority of Almighty God to operate in your life. Next time they give you the mic or ask you to preach, you're going to preach like a wild person. You're going to preach like John the Baptist in the wilderness, screaming, 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 repent. You're going to preach and you're going to teach and you're going to go forth and super excel because my job is to empower you to get to the next level. 
This is your season. I told you, don't worry about what last season did. Don't worry about what they said about you. Don't worry about the mistakes you made. Don't worry about that because God now has, has come and resurrected you. And that's why he said, if you would heed to my voice and hear my prophet, you're going to prosper. Heed to my voice. Heed to the voice of my servant. Now I will catapult you what ground you lost. Now you're going to gain. Every deadness in your career, in your marriage, in your relationship, in your spiritual life, every area, every deadness that came between you and your children, you and your mother, you and your father, that, that came between uh, uh, things that God had put together. I command the fire of the Lord now to go and, and resurrect it. Now, in the name of Jesus, I speak the resurrection power of Almighty God to begin to flow in every situation. This is a season. This is a season to gain what you lost. This is a season to go back and grab it. This is a season to go back and grab your children. This is a season to go back. Go back and, and talk to your parents. Go back and, and, and renew some things. Come on, the enemy got involved and caused a rift. Last season, some things happened and people don't even speak anymore. Let me tell you my last prayer point. I believe it's my last one for, the, for, for this time. The resurrection power that arise in you this season is going to catapult you into your next miracle. To the next big thing that's going to happen in your life. The resurrection power of Almighty God will rest on you, will live in you, will abide in you. The resurrection power of Almighty God is yours for the asking. It's yours. It's yours. See, the cloud of glory is moving. The cloud of glory. Every time I come before you, uh, uh, it's like I feel it stronger each time. Glory to God. This is our first week. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Our first week, God has done some miraculous things. I, I'm waiting to see what he's going to do by the end of the 40 days. This is a sacrifice to come at noon in the evening at supper time and then at night time at nine God said count it a privilege that you are in the mix count it a privilege that you are able to come and you are able to hear and you are able to move some of you hadn't been able to get out hadn't been able to go anywhere even before the academic started, you wasn't even able to, you didn't even go to church. You wasn't able to mingle. You wasn't able to really function before this pandemic started. But God said, by the time it's done, the resurrected power of, of, of the Holy Ghost will rest, rule, and abide in you. It will burn up every dead, dry thing that God did not intend to be. But everything that God had put there, that the enemy dried up, that you allowed to die, God said, I'm going to resurrect it. I'm going to resurrect it. This is a day of reckoning for you. Oh, bless God. Oh, bless God. Even after I get off Facebook Live, I want you to continue, continue to speak to your body. Command it to come alive. Command it to come in line with the word of God. Begin to speak to your body. Begin to move by order of the Holy Ghost. Begin to obey the word of God. Put that hand on your head and the other on your belly button. And begin to speak to your system. Begin to speak life into your system. 
Begin to speak. Get pictures of your children, your grandchildren, and put it at that on your Bible, in your Bible, and begin to pray and, and begin to command some things to come. Hallelujah. Begin to call them back into the fold. Begin to call their mind back in because the devil had a field day with their mind. Begin to call their mind back to where it need to be. Some of them might be out there smoking weed, on drugs. Some of them might be drinking, partying, it's amazing all the all the bars now closed down. Isn't it amazing? Hell can't do nothing. And then the church, the churches are closed. The, the, the nightclub and bars are closed. The churches are closed. We're in our houses. We could make good use of our time. Stop whining and complaining about your children, your spouse. And pray put them on the altar I hear the Lord saying the cloud of glory cloud of glory is moving come with your prayer request send your prayer request put your children on the altar put their name in thank you Jesus decree and declare put them on the altar this is a season now for you to have the altar experience put them on the altar put them on the altar Put their name in the in the word. Get their pictures. Get their pictures. You knew when you had that child what God gave you. You knew what that child was destined to be. But the enemy came along and pulled that child. So what I'm asking you to do today, if you believe in the promise, and you believe God promised you that that child was going to be this, that, or third, then I need you to get their picture. And you could stand on, on, on that scripture and talk about Abraham. God, you did it for Abraham. It took a while for the promise to come. But Abraham kept his word to the, God, to the Lord. Abraham kept on believing God. Sarah gave up and decided, I'm going to make this happen. Because she didn't think she was able to carry a child in her old age. Whatever God promised, you're able to perform. Whatever God promised... And he's able to perform through you. You're able to go forth and perform it because he promised it. He said it. That means it is so. All your excuses is thrown out the window. This now is your time. This is your place. This is your hour to come forth and do mighty exploits in the gospel, mighty exploits in the world, mighty exploits in the kingdom, mighty exploits in the church, mighty exploits in your neighborhood, in your city, in your state, in the country. Some of you, God have called you to the nations and you don't even know it. God have called you to the nations. There's a serious call in your life. The enemy has been fighting so hard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you kept saying what you couldn't do. You couldn't see yourself going to the nations. But I'm telling you, I feel it strong now. There are some of you that are called to the nations. When this pandemic lifts... God is empowering you and he putting a word in you that people are going to want to hear what you have to say. Doors are going to blast open. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, I bless your name. God, I bless your name. Send your prayer request in. Hallelujah. I keep them in the Bible. I keep praying over it throughout the day. Thank you, Father. I bless the name of the Lord and I lift the prayer request up. And Father, I decree and declare now, Father, your promises to each person, God. I decree and declare, Father, whatever situation they're going through, God, that you would move your hand of mercy, your hand of grace. Father, I decree and declare health and healing now. I decree and declare the right mindset, the blood of Jesus flowing in their vein. I decree and declare a turnaround in their life. And because of the turnaround in their life, they'll have a turnaround praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you, Father, for the praise report. Thank you, Father. I honor you now with my prayer. And I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. I stand with you on the promises of God. It ain't over till God said it's over. And remember, love is not love till you give it away. Give away some love today. Amen. Just give yourself a big hug where you're sitting. Hallelujah. I can't see you. I can't reach you physically. But if you just hold yourself, that's my arm hugging you. I love you in the name of Jesus. I love you. Spread some love today. Until we greet, till we meet at 6 o'clock this evening. May the blessings of God overtake you, press down, shake it together, and run over that he would cause people to give to your bosom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.